Our partners at Bet Online continue to be your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, all the latest fighting news, and this season's NFL. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLEAV to get the bonus and get into action. Bet online where the game starts. Hello, hello, hello. It's Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas. We are back season four, and today, Private Talk, we have Lily Bell on the couch. Hello, welcome. Hello. Thank you for joining us here at Private Talk. I'm excited to get to know you a little bit more. I've uh, been hearing your name for quite some time now, so I had to see what all the fuss, what all the hype, and all the loveliness you are all about. So, introduce yourself to Private Talk. Well, my name is Lily Bell, and I have been in the business now for a little bit over four years. Okay. Um, which I feel like now I would say that's like kind of graduating, you know, like you have your freshman, your sophomore, mm. your junior, senior so year. So where do you feel like you are at in uh, your level of porn if you're going to categorize it like that? I would say I'm still a junior. Okay. Yeah, I would say there's still a lot of learning that I have to do, but I feel more of a veteran for sure. Okay, so you've yeah. got some scenes under your belt. You yeah. kind of feel more confident. What are some of maybe your favorite uh, companies you've worked for, maybe body of work that you really feel like have come into your own as where you could say you feel like a veteran in, in the game? Yeah, um, I've done a lot of work with Dorcel this year. Um, so I got to travel to Paris and work for them. That was pretty cool. Um, and then also I've got to, you know, play on with my acting with them as well. And that's mm. been nice. Um, is that something that you wanted to do prior to the industry no. or something that you kind of like unlocked and was like, Hey, I really like this and kind of gotten from there. That one. Okay. Yeah. I, I never, ever pictured myself as to be like an actress. And I think I've said this on a couple of podcasts, but like if I, when I was watching porn, if I ever heard anyone try to act, I'm like, Mm, next mm. like I don't want to you know like, like that's just not my do you vibe think of that now while you're doing it yourself or do you just kind of put that in the back of your mind because how do you kind of disassociate in those sense where it's like you're not something that you really wanted or practiced to do but mm -hmm. maybe you're just you know something that's natural to you and it comes to thing do you think that it's like is it forced is it something that just kind of comes natural do you think that's why it kind of falls into place you know I guess I just shifted it in my mind like knowing that like I guess just everyone around me was like acting's the thing now so I just was like okay I guess acting's the thing now okay. and when I started shooting for companies like Less Cinema they were having me try out like and like read lines and I like and that was very interesting I never would have ever thought that I would have to do that so I feel like I just yeah I don't know it's it's interesting like like okay for for, for example my first like big movie that I did that had to do with acting the nun was getting like a cross through her eye and then having sex with a cross through her eye and okay. it's like I don't really know who's watching that and jerking off to it I mm -hmm. think it's more just like a body of art for people to appreciate mm. I don't I wouldn't jerk off to that but yeah but it's a niche for everyone everyone yeah. is into their own thing so yeah I think we're just seeing an air of like like the person that I'm dating he does a lot of different types of weird shit like he works for this company called Parasited where they have like, it's like real life hentai, like with like the worm and like going okay. into the girl. Now is that only like a soft core situation or is it actually no, adult and like they're fucking in with all of that as well? Yeah, like slime okay. coming out and okay. into, yeah, it's, so it's very. Like, it's almost like 3D yeah. of things, but like, all right, all right, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. So, I mean, I guess I just never thought that porn was going to be into these different avenues. Mm. Um, I just really always viewed myself as going to be someone that's going to just be like a gonzo girl, but that's not what I am. Okay, so with that being said, let's kind of, let's let's backtrack a little bit, because mm -hmm. you say that, you know, you didn't think that you'd be this type of performer, maybe, mm -hmm. and, you know, things like that. How did you get into porn? Was it something where you an avid porn watcher? Were you someone that you were a really big fan? Did you like have people that you looked up to yeah. um, to kind of do that thing? And when you say that you would only just be a gonzo girl, is that just what you were watching? And, you know, did you not like how did the whole porn process kind of get into where you are right now? 
Well, I guess what I always used to watch was pretty intense stuff. So I guess that's what I always viewed porn to be. I so didn't explain ex- like ex- uh, intense explain stuff. Ex- I can't even say the word <laughs> intense stuff for like private talk because everybody's intensity is kind of different. Totally. Like I've been, you know, I was in the adult entertainment industry for several years, mm-hmm. um, and I never was in somebody that did bondage or anything like that because that to me was my the extreme, the mm-hmm. like those things. So mine is a little bit more. I think you know tab or not as taboo that people would think. Yeah. Um, so what are what your like limitations or what your when you say extreme? Explain that to us. Um, well, I love bondage. I'm okay. very into kink, and I was like in the Tumblr era growing up. So okay. like watching that kind of you know with all the gifts and all the different like eroticas that would be written and mm. I remember just being really into that and starting to like get into the whole like daddy play I, I liked the like the big and the little I, I liked that whole type of power So you were dynamic. doing that in your personal life from watching what you saw on screen? I tried to a little bit in my personal relationships growing up but I mean also I was young and I'm learning mm-hmm. and so there were s- certain things that I like experimented with but I think when I turned 19, 20, that's when I started doing more rough stuff. Um, but I didn't really start really doing rough stuff until I was in porn. Like I would okay. have my boyfriends like do stuff with me. it's something that was piquing your interest yeah. and it's something that you knew that you like either liked but you either maybe didn't trust that part of the time because again, like you said, it's something new. You don't really know what you're doing. So I think that's kind of why I like porn is mm-hmm. because it also gives you it that unlocks avenue. things you know what I mean where it's like you may not have ever known that but mm-hmm. doesn't mean you have to go as extreme but it gives you a play a kind of like a blueprint of what is out there and yeah. what is like kind of you can kind of navigate to your own degree of extremeness like this year I did my first gangbang mm-hmm. which I never thought in a million years I'd ever do something like that and I started to like develop a fantasy of being used by multiple men this year I like would talk about it in dirty talk like in my private time and different things like that so I started to like have that kind of get built in my mind and then eventually I knew that it was coming I knew I was gonna do it and then it happened and okay that was really exciting so is this something that you brought to the director or the company and was like hey I've been fantasizing this for a long time I want to do this or were they like hey Lily I think this is something that you should do how do you feel about it Okay, so I'm going to talk about this without using company names. Um, I was supposed to have one for this big feature that I was supposed to do. It was going to be like a crescendo, like, you know, everything was building up. And I ended up having to get taken out of that feature because I had to have surgery recently. And that was a major bummer. Um, But regardless, they had to cut costs with budget. And so they cut the gangbang anyway. And that was really unfortunate. But it was kind of like my only saving grace where I thought, okay, this is okay because they cut that. And that's, you know, shitty. But um, to backtrack, I did another gangbang the week prior, mm. uh, two weeks prior, sorry. You're and just gangbanging all over town, Lily. I yeah. love it. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, a girl canceled. Okay. And that's why I got to do it. Okay. You know? So yeah, I'm a believer in everything happens for a reason. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, this is a chance of a lifetime. Uh, there's only about five other girls that have done this type of gangbang for this company. I'm now going to be one of them. I'm going to do it. I'm going to fucking show out. Um, but then uh, then I had to have surgery right after, and then I wasn't able to do that movie. So it was like a bittersweet thing, okay. but to be entirely honest, if I look at it like in the grand scheme of things, that gangbang that I did is going to be a thousand times bigger than that movie. Okay. And even other people were like, you know, that movie people will forget about, but that gangbang will live on for like a long time so have you already shot this one and has already been out can we like, it's coming we? out so okay. it's, i don't know when it's coming out it's supposed to be coming out before nomination so it's going to be a before september 30th so i think august or late july it's late july already okay so probably august okay yeah. okay exciting yeah, i'm really excited so is that something that you would do more of or is it something that you're just kind of like a one-off like now that you see like you know it's like evolution of porn right and also of you as a performer it's mm-hmm. like once you start doing things more you either like know you like it you don't like it are you going to go into more hardcore extreme things is that the most extreme that you want to go like is there other things on your list that you haven't done that you're thinking about doing soon so um i didn't do anal for that gangbang okay so i feel like that's another time where I can use Mm -hmm. another hole. So, um, figuratively. Yeah. (laughs) And then, um, 
Yeah, I, I think it's definitely something I'm going to be doing again. You know, it's funny, when I was doing it, I remember feeling like I wanted to grow another arm or grow another, like, because it's just like, it was very much you like... Needed more. Yeah, yeah, and I felt a little frantic, and then I remind myself to kind of just like, you know, focus and, and, you know, not be so like needing to grab everything, but it's kind of like you want to because they're all around you, so yeah. you're just like... Did you come with all of them? Um, I came pretty hard twice. Okay. Yeah, and then I squirted once, which is also new rare, okay. and that's um, something new that like two Spanish men have pulled out of me, and I don't know why Spanish okay. men have been okay. able to okay. like pull that out of me. It's okay. very odd. Okay. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's probably more the man than the Spanish part. Yeah. But who knows? No, they're totally. Quite, they're it's quite totally lovers this, as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like it's also like it's a technique. I think that some people, especially more sometimes Latin lovers or whatever, yeah. who take more time into really like pleasing a woman, mm -hmm. where sometimes you know their male counterparts um, in the industry are just straight to the yeah. point. Sometimes where it's just like you know you have to do, but it's not really making me feel that great. You're just doing like you know. The cookie cutter of what you're supposed to do well and it's also like i'm not a squirter so like to have that happen and it happened like two weeks in a row with two of the two different men and i just remember being like what is going on here because the only other guy that has made me squirt um was prince yashua accidentally and i remember like miles long being like accidents happen and they're yeah. quite fun because you need to tell me when that's going to happen i said uh, I had no idea it was yeah. going to happen. And it's probably not going to happen again. It was just like a, a fluke thing. Yeah. And then JP made it happen once for kink, but never with someone's penis and never with someone's fingers, except that one time with Prince. Well, so I, was I like, mean, it okay. sounds like a fun time. I think yeah. that I think it's all about, you know, being comfortable and relaxing and like actually enjoying your partners and not yeah. trying. Cause I think it's all about, it's, not it's like losing control you mm -hmm. know what i mean it's like and you those things happen when you're at your or, most orgasmic state and like you're kind of just like and because you know. for me when they're doing it i mean i don't know about you but i'm not orgasming it's a release it's a nice release but it's but not it's a different type of orgasm yeah so it's like it's more internal in a sense of like you know the same way like you don't we don't like our female ejaculate literal. you know what i mean that's why yeah. it's like where it's very few times that it'll actually um spew places yeah. where it's like sometimes even people don't realize that they're squirting mm -hmm. but it's just not shooting up mm -hmm. it's just like splashing or like you're extra wet or things yeah. like that so it's just like knowing your body and kind of like what your fluid does for you i had such a fascination with squirting before i got into porn like when you're asking if i was a fan of porn beforehand i was like i was super big into watching girls squirt and i remember like researching like why don't i have these glands like why are mm. certain girls and then i realized like what it was when I got in yeah and then I was like oh you so know? who are some of the girls that you looked up to in the industry okay I have a I have an interesting array of girls that I okay. used to watch and I never watched men okay I don't I like if know. I saw a penis I was like meh um but I I liked Bonnie Rotten I liked Riley Reed. I liked Gina Valentina I liked Carly Gray um I liked Tori Black um Janice Griffith. Yeah, I liked a, a lot of random arrays okay, of girls. a plethora girls. of, of yeah. different females doing stuff. Yeah, okay. it was never a type. It was more just what they emulated on camera for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Has there any of those people that you've actually got to work with and or maybe that you want to work with? I would love to. Um, all of those ladies kind of have fizzled out. Fizzle, fizzled out. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they're, they're your time period, kind of. Some of them. I think they're yeah. a little bit after me. Yeah. I don't know. Is Bonnie your time period? After. After. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you said Tori. She's around. She's around the same yeah. time. Tori's the only one that's about the same. Okay. Um, but I know Bonnie's definitely out, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But Gina Valentina definitely goes stuff for her OF. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're all definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Still shooting some capacity. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think only those two girls, but kind of those still doing things. I definitely know my stepdad used to watch you. Nice. I, know that that's, I know that that's like a creepy thing to say, but. How old are you? Um, I'm 27. You're 27? Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Is your stepdad hot? He is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's how, do you, how do you know that your stepdad watched me? You, what, um, you like saw his porn? No, my family and I are very open. So like when I was talking to mm -hmm. Spiegler, I remember I talked to Spiegler when I was like in 2017 and I, I remember he was like, my girls have to do it all, and you have to do this, and you have to do that. And I was like, eh, click, and I, I didn't do that. But when I talked to my stepdad about it, and I said, I'm thinking about doing this, 
you know, he's like, oh, well, I really like Alexis Texas. I think she's great. So. Oh, well, thanks. I'm yeah. done. You know? <laughs> Shout out. Yeah. I mean, you know, we both have their own taste. Yeah. I think for me, again, why it's one of, I think it's kind of fascinating. And even sitting on the couch with, you know, different girls that have been in the industry for before me, with mm -hmm. me, you know, after me. I think it's really cool to see how, you know, people have changed about the evolving of, like, how to talking with their parents before yeah. you do it. And, you know, the, the levels of, like, the acceptance. Not, obviously, not everybody, like, parents would say, yeah, that's what I want you to be to grow up. But just having the openness to be allowing you to be who you want to be and mm -hmm. free whatever that means for you, yeah. I think is really cool. And, you know, um, the evolution of where the world is now. And mm -hmm. because, I mean, as much as sex workers get such a bad name, we're still people, we still have feelings, we still have families, we still have all these things. So I think the more that we can communicate and talk about it, the more that it doesn't need to be a shameful thing. It can mm -hmm. just be an accepted thing throughout um, you know, everyone, not just families and, you know, the, the world in itself. Yeah. hundred percent. I recognize that what I have with my family is a rarity. Like I, when I talk with other people, yeah. I, I definitely throughout my years, I'm like, I'm very lucky to have what I have. So you said that you, you know, you talked to Speakler first and you, you call, you know, you got kind of scared cause you have to do everything. So yeah. what made you change your mind and become a Speakler girl? Well, I'm doing anal this year, okay. so that was a big thing, and I wanted. So, did someone... you were you with Spiegler prior to that, no. or okay? No, I was with OC for three years. Okay, yeah, and they were a great agency. They're the ones that made me move here. Um, didn't make me move here, but they pushed me. Mm -hmm. um, and then my three years was up, and I just was looking for different representation. And everyone around me was also like, "You, you, sh you need to be a Spiegler girl. That's where yeah. you should be going." And I said, "Okay." And um, you know, I talked with Spiegler first of all. I don't know if I should be. I, I think it's okay to talk about this because I'm with them now, so it doesn't matter. But I talked with them, and they Spiegler wouldn't really talk with me we talked for about four hours and I thought I would be part of the agency and then he's like well you're on a list and yeah I'm like okay cool so then I you know goes call back on the first of the month so I call back nothing I'm like okay I call back again the second month nothing I'm like okay well I'm not gonna call back the third month mm. so then AVN happens and I see George um, and Spiegler and then I am mm, maybe like four days after AVN I'm sitting out on my couch and I'm waiting for my postmates and I answered the phone and I thought it was my Postmates and it was George. Mm. And he was like, hey, you know, I saw you at AVN and I've been doing some thinking and I would like to interview you and uh, have you be part of the agency. And I said, okay, cool. And so for me, I mean, that door closed. So yeah. I was like, okay, whatever, I'm good. I'll, I'll just keep, keep it moving. Uh, but then they hit me up and I was like, okay, okay. Sure. So for you to get that feeling of now, like you said, if you weren't going to call one more time because it was your ego or whatever, because you just felt neglected. Yeah. How does that feel now to be like, now they're searching, or like seeking you? Did yeah. you feel like, oh, I kind of I made it or they recognized me? Like, how is that feeling to finally get, I guess, the call you've been waiting for? Um, I was like, it's not Spiegler calling, it's George. So, you know, it's, it's still, uh, I shout out to George. I love him a lot. So, um. I think that that's great, but I really wanted to win over Spiegler, okay. and I feel like I have now, but yeah. it's taken some time. He's definitely somebody that's like, you know, uh, I don't know, he's a, he's a hard one to crack, and he's also like, like I'll give an example, like I go, okay, I'm going to call you on, you know, the first of the month, I'll call you, you know, exactly 30 days from now, and I guess it, it was, you know, not exactly 30 days, and he goes, well that's not exactly 30 days. So if you were gonna call me 30 days from now, that would be on the fifth. So you need to tell me what you actually mean because words are literal and blah, blah, blah. And I was mm. like, shit, okay, got it. You know, yeah. so he's like very much, you know. Yeah, I feel like for me being, you know, a girl in the industry who him not being my agent, but him, I'm having a lot of close friends that have been with him and seeing how he operates. I think that, you know, there there comes a standard of when they talk about Spiegler girls and, you know, LA Direct girls and mm -hmm. all these, you know, Motley, all these different agencies. But I think what really captivates like who he is, is that I think he really holds the girls to who they who they should be or not yeah. who they should be, who they are, but pushing you to be like worlds are literal. You know, yeah. people, this is a business, you know, time is money. There's things that, you know, if you if you're not sure you don't want to do, then this business may not be for you. Yeah. But I think being very direct and really like, you know, being mind conscious and really being on the girl's side and not just about money and business, I think is what kind of pushed him to where he is and his agency is that he's had one of some of the most successful girls come in and out of there. So I think that, you know, 100%. sometimes it's it's interesting 
interesting and it's weird, especially coming from different agencies and how some people don't work like that. Um, but I think that's also telling of what your work ethic is because mm -hmm. it's like it works for some people and it's some people can't deal with it. And yeah. it doesn't mean that they're any less or better than you in your performance, mm -hmm. but it's also some people just don't get along and it's like energetic. And yeah. I think also with the industry, everything is about energy because it's about chemistry. We're having sex on camera, but it's also a business and how we like run those things is kind of how we fluidly get our business and our brand to mm -hmm. what they're really meant to be and where we can flourish the most because yeah. you know we have the people and the team behind us then you can be as slutty and raunchy that you need to be when you have somebody on your side doing all the other things and you know making sure that is your best interest and heart yeah and I mean I have to say like even just being with them for the short amount of time that I have like they are fucking agents like, yeah they are like on it they're on the ball they care you know they're calling me I've never had an I mean I love I like OC a lot um but I I've never had an agent call me to check up on me multiple times after a shoot or like you know to I don't know there's just been, there's this extra mile that I'm feeling with them and I'm just very grateful for it and how long have you been with them so far now started in March and okay. I had a kind of rough go in the beginning and so like you know now I'm not working and so like all I've been wanting to do is work and so when I get back in August I'm putting my head down and I'm grinding so are you not working because you said you had a surgery mm -hmm. and so you're recovering from yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, is that everything like is it health wise did you do something everything I good had now? a cyst okay. um it was just like a inclusion cyst like anyone can get them but mine was just really really bad yeah. and it got really large and then I had to have surgery and um yeah it was <laughs> shitty but yeah. now it's okay and I um am sewn back up and um, I'm gonna get the scar lasered and then yeah. we'll get well, I'm it I'm glad you took care of yourself and you know took the time because some people don't, don't do that either and yeah. kinda, like it sometimes it's hard to be like oh you know I can do this or this was seen one more thing but it's like you know our bodies are what kind of fuels our industry and your work so it's like you know sometimes it's nice to like I think that's kind of what the pandemic showed that like to sit down and it'll still be there whenever mm -hmm. you're rested and healed and ready to be yeah all of those lily, lily bell things and it's tough man i mean i was devastated like i was like you know like because all you want to do is like have your body work and it's frustrating when it doesn't but it, at, like you said it's like the, i mean all i have is my body so it's like it has to for sure be taking i have to take care i think of when it. you're young you know it's one of those things too it's like it's it's hard to step away from things especially you know when you're doing well you started with the new agency you're having you're all these things going, you know yeah but i think that's also the world showing you that maybe you need to sit down and you have a reflection of like where yeah. is this really going like what yeah. can i do to where i'm not in this situation anymore you know where i'm not having to Obviously, it's a cyst. You couldn't really do anything about it. But you know what I mean? Changing your, the way your lifestyle is. If yeah. it's like eating healthier, or like getting regular checkups, so putting those things, I think, is another big importance that people don't realize about sex workers is that, you know, we do have a lot of health things that we have to take care of and if Constantly. those things aren't taken care of then yeah. we can't work so it's yeah. like you know we're kind of really extra on those things I think that that's one thing with me is I learned way more about being like a woman than you know I started when I was 21 but I learned everything from what it looks like what yeah. it's supposed to look what you're not supposed to you know all these things like what that feels like mm -hmm. and you know what's what's a good sore what's a bad sore you know all those things um but porn definitely kind of opened those things to like questions of like well why does this feel this way yeah you know so i'm definitely appreciative of having just that knowledge of the porn education and not just the fun though you know so. no i i was i think i said this on holly's podcast last but i was like i've never been more clean in my life mm. like you really have to be so so clean and you know because it's not just for you but also for everyone else and yeah it's just so important so were you a highly sexually active person prior to porn um, no. No? <laughs> so, I, I mean, yes, but not promiscuously. So, like, like exploring-wise, yeah. but, like, more with, like, one person, you're doing a lot of things. Yes. So, we still never got to, how did you actually get into the industry? So, how did you just sign up for porn? What was, like, the final, like, straw to be like, you know what? Spiegler wasn't for me. It was too much, but OC, obviously, mm -hmm. was the place for you to land first. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of made you that, that final push? Well, okay, so I mean, I started camming, mm -hmm. um, and when I started camming, I was in a monogamous relationship, and that guy, you know, he felt that I was pushing him, you know, he was like, I met you when you were working in an office, I'm working in an office, now all of a sudden you're doing this other job. Were you camming with him, or are you no. camming solo? No, I was camming solo, okay. and his friends uh, that he went... Have you always been going by Lily Bell? 
Yes. Is that your name? How did that name come about? So uh, that boy that I'm talking about, I didn't really know about name hierarchy then. Okay. So he was like, you should be either like Lily Jean or you should be like Lily Bell. And in my head, I don't know. I was like, why are you naming me these people? And he was like, you should be Bell and just take the E off. So you name me after Lexi because he used to mm. watch her all the mm. time. Okay. And Makes I was sense. like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And so when I started camming, I was that. Mm. And then when I got to OC, I was that. And when I was a stripper, my name was Spencer. Okay. And so to be honest, when I started, I wanted to change my name, but at that point- You're already doing too many I'm already stuff. doing yeah. it. And then it was like shooting yourself in the foot when you change yeah. your name. So yeah. I just was like, I guess this is my name. Is it the name that I particularly really, really wanted? No, I had a friend, um, an old friend in high school whose her last name is that. And she actually got mad at me and offended and thought that I like after all these taking years, it after her. Yeah, and I, I was like, no, girl, that's <laughs> not even thinking about you. That's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting how things like that work because sometimes it's something that you thought or that you wanted or something, maybe a nickname you will yeah. buy or some. Most times, sometimes agents kind of give you names now too, mm -hmm. or or like in your case, like an ex boyfriend that's yeah. like, oh, you know, either you're my favorite porn star mm -hmm. or whatever. It's just kind of interesting how that kind of goes with. But I feel like at the end of the day. Names are names and who the person behind that name is yeah. really like telling. So it's like you either have the choice to make that your own and mm -hmm. or you live in the shadows of somebody else. So it's like, you know, for sure, it's like you if you want to be Lily Bell, then you make a name for Lily Bell. And it doesn't mean who, whoever before was yeah. like that. So I feel I'll like have people like uh, like Renee from New Sensations. Like mm. she's called me Lexi before. Mm. Like there's people, you it's know, it's very close and very similar. She's one of my best friends. So it's just yes, it's funny yeah, because yeah. Uh, we had you today and then we also have alexis tay okay. next so it's I like, like very similar names to both of us both, ironically yeah. the same day so i was like really funny how that works yeah but it's just interesting how the business works too about mm -hmm. how that pushes because it's like obviously it's like those names like you said you didn't know the hierarchy of what those things were and why yeah. your boyfriend was saying that but they like obviously mean status to certain things Again, yeah. but it's also one of those things you either take it and be like, hey, I've got big shoes to fill, which you've been doing a really great job and you've been you're doing your own thing. So, you. you know, it's, you know, you just got to own it and just be who you want to be. Yeah, because I didn't realize until I got in. And now when I see other girls like come in with different people's names that are this, I'm like, oh, you, mm, I think it's you one know. of those things. It's like a conversation at first. Even me for me, when I saw Alexis Tay's name, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, oh, yes. I mean, that's pretty close mm -hmm. to my name. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's like it's a conversation by like, hey, where did this come from? How did yeah. you see whatever? And nine times out of ten again it's one of those things it's not personal mm -hmm. it's not whatever people don't really know this like it's again not even a severe thing it's it's just a name yeah but, and i mean with my situation we don't look anything like you lexi kind of like i think mm -hmm. you kind of honestly look more like me in my younger days yeah. than anything mm -hmm. but again you gotta make make your own lane and make you you know you're making it doing a really good job about it thank you yeah. So when you come back, you got, okay, so this boyfriend named you or suggested these names. Yeah. He said that you were camming, you, he met you in the real world, mm -hmm. and he's this whole thing. So how long after did that split you guys apart to where and then I'm feeling this conversation going to then decided just to do porn? Yeah, well, he, he had a bunch of friends that were watching me on cam, mm -hmm. and that kind of rocked his world because he was like, oh, my God, all my fraternity brothers are watching you. And so they thought that I was, like, cheating on him because they thought that he didn't know. Okay. Um, and so, but is that cheating if you're fucking yourself? No, but I think if you go to Indiana University, you might have a brain <laughs> where you like you're very like you okay, know. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. So they uh, definitely thought that I was you know they a giant horse in that there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So he. <sighs> You know, it, it just, it spiraled. So I think, you know, he was always cheating on me. This is what my stepdad said. So, like, I found out that he was cheating on me, and that was my silver lining to just fucking, you okay. know, jet off. But uh, my stepdad goes, I think that there was slow and fast seasons with the cheating. I think when you started to do this, you know, he sped up with it, and yeah. then he slowed down. You know, it was kind of Because in like his that. mind, it justified that what you were doing. So in their, in their little minds, yeah. they think, like, oh, well... You're doing what you want, so yeah. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But he would never admit it. I mean, to this day, he still never admitted that he did it, even though I had all the receipts and all of the mm. proof. But, you know, I guess you deny, deny, deny until you... 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're in a better place. You know what I mean? It's one of those things that you yeah. can deny it all you want, but the truth, you know, the truth is what the truth is for you, no matter what his truth is to him mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Because, you know, once you feel like that as a woman, that you're either cheated on or the trust is just broken, there's no going back. No. So even if you went back one more time, you know, it's not, that would have still would have been like a like, try, but the trust is still never the same. So no. it's like, as women, we try to feel like, oh, we want to try until we haven't, you know, we don't have anything else to try left. But yeah. it's like, just cut your losses and run. I was already ready to be done. So when it happened, I was I was happy that okay. it happened. And when I we broke up, I felt so free. Like I just So what was yeah. your first scene? My first scene was Twisties with Giselle Palmer. Okay. And um it she's not shooting anymore really either. Um she was a Spiegler girl for a little bit. And uh it was cool to have Twisties as my first scene. So I you just that. started with girls? Yes. Okay. I was trying to start a girl, girl and solo because when I was with my boyfriend, that's how I signed. Mm. And he's you know, he would be like swear to me you'll never do boy girl swear you know and I said I oh, swear I swear but I knew that I wanted to and you wanted then, the dick it was, yeah. it was gonna come eventually yeah warming you up mm -hmm. okay well, and I also thought to myself too like this was the person I was gonna marry have children with and I thought like I've only had sex with like six people so mm. far I'm like that's like I can't I can't stop now and obviously he wasn't stopping so that's one like, of the cases i like to say it's like you're young dumb and full of cum because it's like one of those things where it's like at that age we want to be like oh we're adults and we like want to have this like perfect relationship yeah. and we're in this adult job that we have but it's also like we don't know ourselves like i started no. porn when i was 21 and i feel like that was a perfect age because i was already out of college but yeah. I, I wasn't you know i still was young enough to be impressionable and like eased to a situation, but I still had a, my own head on my shoulders mm -hmm. where I could make my own decisions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even then it's like, you know, I got married young because I thought I had to and you know, all these things, but it's like, you don't really even discover who you really are until you start, and maybe not, porn for everybody but the sexual partners and like you know it's just like exploring and it doesn't even really have the quantity of people but the, just the like things of what you're doing and, yeah. and any relationship that's going to like put you in a place where like you, ho you only have these stipend things like please don't want me to do mm -hmm. boy girl or only do girl girl it's like that's good for the moment but that's also on the, their problem because that's their insecurities of thinking that they're going to lose you or lose yeah. the, you know that situation and the control of what that looks like so it's like it's interesting hearing 20 something year old you know like and at that time we were how 21 i'm sure i was 22 at the and time. be like this is yeah. the man i'm supposed to be with again mm -hmm. it's the the fairy tale of like that's ideally we want to find our partner yeah but like look at so much the evolution of how much of a woman you've grown within those five four or five years you know and it's like yeah. and thinking of like look back at now of like what if that would have happened you oh, know? know like you wouldn't been able well, he's to he's married and has a child so that would be i'm sure like, he's still watching your porn i well <laughs> No, and I'm so evil, too, because, like, when we broke up, I'm like, and I'm your category, so you'll never be able to escape me. Hey, it's, it's, and it's true. true. It's, it's definitely yeah. true. The, you know, that's that's the good, the power of the pussy. Yeah. The power of the pussy to make sure, you know, we will say thank him for pushing you into the industry, because obviously you are flourishing and making a name for yourself. So yeah. I think, you know, there are benefits of looking with that, that those, those relationships serve us at the time. Mm -hmm. And we move along. And, yeah. you know, good good luck with your, your baby and your wife. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Who do you go to for advice? You talk about your stepdad a lot mm -hmm. i know he's a big fan of mine shout out stepdad <laughs> again but who do you go to your stepdad your mom who do you go to for advice i go to my mom a lot um i go to my friends um i have a good girlfriend named charlotte sins um she's also a spieler girl um i go to my boyfriend as well okay. um he's a director his name's ricky greenwood um who else do i go to for advice there's a few people I've gone to advice for. Like when I was asking about Spiegler, I went to Casey Calvert because I felt like she was a good person to talk to. Okay. Um, yeah, so you seem like you do your research. Yes. You're not just, you know, being like, oh, I like that. Let me just run into it. Like no, head I'm big first. on research. Yeah. Okay. Super That's big good. on That's good. Yeah. That's important. I feel like for the longevity of where you really want to have a career in things, it's mm -hmm. like, I think there's always two the girls that have fun mm -hmm. and then there's girls that are in for the long term and really like wanting to do something. So I feel like it's important to really, again, what works for you? What, what, you know, every career girl has been in a different lane, a different scene, a different, you know, companies and whatever. Everybody is very different. So it's yeah. like you really have to be true to what works for you. And you have to really figure out your brand and then, you know, kind of hone in on that. And like when we're talking about like, you know, a 19 year old or, you know, someone that's young that comes in and like, you know, is like, wants to just fuck because they want to get back at their boyfriend or different things like that like you know like me saying like oh you'll never be able to you know escape me that's cool and all but like 
that fizzles out. Yeah. This job, you know, once you're in it, you have to realize that you can't just be in it because you hate your boyfriend or your ex-boyfriend. You have to like actually sure. take this seriously. And you can tell the people that do and you can tell the people that don't. And I heard someone say to me recently that like the average shelf life of a female performer is about a year and a half, hmm. um, which I felt like I thought like maybe it'd be a little bit more. But if I think about it, you know, it, yeah. it's really hard for me to chime in on that in the current era of yeah. what things are. And I say that because, you know, pre the pandemic, there was only fans and there was other things, but it wasn't as apparent as there was more companies shooting more actively mm -hmm. and girls shooting more Then the pandemic happened. And then only fans, you know, became this big sensation. And all these yeah. girls started shooting for themselves and seeing what that really was of the hours put in at home to being on set and vice versa. So that could be true now. I mm -hmm. think it's harder for girls nowadays as far as to making a name for themselves and really stand, standing out in an industry that's very um, saturated and not saturated in a bad way because it's always, you know, um, there's always new girls coming in and, and those things, but it's just um, who stands out, like star power, yeah. where it's like, well, there's no more, there's not a lot of stars anymore. When you talk about, for me, it's like, there's porn girls, but there's not a lot of porn stars. 100%, and me I and my boyfriend that, were talking you know, about that completely. It comes, yeah. uh, people get offended about those things, whatever, and it's, and it's not about an offensive thing, but I think that it's about just the hierarchy of how the business and yeah. the things that are ran. And I think that there's, there are, you know, a few girls within the industry at this curtain day that I've had on the show and you being including one of them that even myself haven't been in the uh, shot anything in five, six years. Mm -hmm. I still hear through the pipeline of like, you know, the porn gossip and the industry, like who's the it girls, who's doing things, who's mm -hmm. making a splash on things, who's yeah. marketing things way like, and so I think it's way more harder for you girls to make a name for yourselves, but I almost feel like y'all are smarter about it because you guys have things about you like with the social media with the marketing mm -hmm. and like some people that I would have never known how to do things myself that I've taken time to learn that you guys know right, uh, like right away yeah and um, and I think it's just because of the the age difference of things mm -hmm. and the technology advancement mm -hmm. you know and it's nobody else's difference that you either get it or you don't and mm -hmm. so I think that that to me is the fascinating part about the newer girls and the coming up is how well you're playing in a world of the youtubers the tiktokers all these things and still staying relevant and I yeah. think that that speaks volumes from the girls that are just do one or two scenes and then you never hear anything about them you know and everybody's content is good content you know if that's what you want to do and you want to put out there it's great but it's like who stands out in the crowd well and I think what you said it best I mean oversaturation is is major right now I mean it, and so like your time period and even just I mean just honestly pre-pandemic you you could make your name for yourself way easier I think it was easier but I also feel like it was in a, in a doling still I think something needed to happen in the in the world and society even technology wise for us for people mm -hmm. to really you know, shake things up to see who are stars, who can survive, who can yeah. do these things. Because nowadays it's really telling of, you have to show and see if you have a personality. You know, like, you know, like I'm myself, like I love my show because for me it's one of those things that's it's a one place that I'm not censored. I have, you know, I have my opinion out there. I'm not one mm -hmm. that always chimes on every current event on, um, on social media platforms because I feel like that's not the place. Mm -hmm. Do I have those opinions and thoughts? Yeah, but I feel mm -hmm. like there's a time and a platform to do that. And with this is my show, so it's I sit down and I talk to guests about things about on that nature. So I feel like it's good to show the diversity of what that can bring. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? So that's why I feel like it's, you know, but that takes effort. You know, people think like, oh, everyone has a podcast. And a lot of people do, mm -hmm. but it's it takes a lot of work. It takes personality. It's people, even with like the TikTok, the, you know, the skits that they do, it's so animated and showing like their growth from like the, comedi the comedic route to just the like, sense you know like the just the co like a uh, content in general mm -hmm. just being funny or viral and all these things so it takes it's a very creative you know field so now it's like if you can't do any of those being a pretty girl it just doesn't cut it anymore no you have not. to do more you yeah. know and you i can't think that that's good and it's challenging because yeah. i feel like you know that's kind of people get a bad name of like oh you're just so pretty people be like you're too pretty for porn i'm like what does that mean yeah i'm like um i'm Fine. I'm mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? I don't think there's a too pretty for porn, you know, no. kind of thing. I think that I loved porn and I loved what I got from it. And not, you, welcome. You got to see this pretty face. Get fun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, and it's also like, God, some of the prettiest girls I've ever seen have been in porn. Yeah. You know? So I think that that's silly for people to say that. I think it's one of those, for me, what, you know, and again, it goes back to what is pretty to you. I think someone yeah. who owns their sexuality and who's comfortable in their own skin and those like that, to me, is beautiful. So mm -hmm. I think I've seen those in this industry as well as like the most beautiful 
women because they just own who they are and it's unapologetically them. One thing for me that has been major that I've realized with getting into the industry is like, um, I used to care about looks when I was younger, or like uh, very, uh, cons- I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but it was, um, yeah, it was just like surface. And I and then I realized, yeah, superficial. And I realized um, looks don't mean anything. Yeah. With sexual chemistry and the way you connect with someone, it really doesn't mean anything. So let's talk about that. You said that you're in a relationship. Mm-hmm. He's a director. How did you guys meet on set? Did you, were you working for him? How did those lines like cross? Did yeah. you ever work with somebody prior to and have any relationships in the industry? So I had a little like, I mean, I fucked around and like had little friends with benefits and things like that. It's funny when you get to LA, like it's kind of like a frenzy out here. I just was like, holy shit. I'm like, it's you know. The, you want to do content? You yeah. Do content? It's like, you just want to fuck me. Just tell me that you want to fuck me. <laughs> yeah. Just be straight up. Well, then I also would have guys where I would just like, fuck, you know, and then that was really fun. And, um, but it was also like, also dealing with like. Uh, my vagina because it's like I have all these scenes but I want to fuck you but then I'm like I, ca- I can't use my body tonight with you because I need it for tomorrow so there was you like you don't realize the challenges that we do for you guys <laughs> for you fans out there we're just protecting our vagina so you can get the best scenes possible literally yeah so I mean that that was tough um, but yeah with me and Ricky you know we uh, were just friends at first you know we, uh, he had me on set like for Misa X like five days in a row um, I remember I did like 40 pages of dialogue that whole week it was just ridiculous so it's like a feature but it was just like a bunch of different scenes you know um and my head just hurt after that and uh so like I just remember being on his sets I never like thought of him in that way or thought of things like that because my mind was always like focus on your lines don't fuck up and so you weren't trying to like blow him and get like but no, more lines. No, no, and always. never in my life would I have ever thought that we would be dating. Like I just never thought that. And okay. I remember he started to like hit me up on like DMs and like um, messaging me. Is he talented or just director? He's just a director. Okay, yeah. Um, and I, for personally, for me, I, I unless a male talent really, really sweeped me off my feet, like really, really, where I was like, okay, I have to be with you. I had a rule where I'm like. I'm not, okay. I'm not going to be with a male talent. I just know that it's a little messy, as I'm saying, as I'm shitting where I'm eating, but it's like also messy in the way where like I'm kind of a jealous person and mm. I know that I, I, I just know that it would be toxic for me to do that. So you're jealous in the aspect of like you couldn't allow your partner to have sex and not think that it was just work? Yeah, like, I, I feel like it's interesting because, like, I'm in a relationship where my boyfriend, you know, allows me to do that. And then I sit there and I tell him it is just work. But if roles were reversed and he went to go start shooting content, I'd be like, no, no, no. You'd say no. It would be a deal breaker. It, it would be hard. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be. Now, like, now, yeah, I would. So I in know, return yeah. now, let's say that someone new came and said, I don't want you to shoot anymore. Mm-hmm. Would you do that? Absolutely not. So no. that would be, so if somebody tried to tell you you couldn't do that, yeah. you would say, you're not for me. God, this sounds bad. I guess <laughs> I guess I would. It's not, this is a safe space, but I also feel like these are questions that probably have never been asked you. So I yeah. feel like this is, this is private talk, getting to kind of a girl talk. I feel like I'm a good read, like I read people very well. So it's like you got to navigate those feelings because if you don't ask the hard questions now, mm-hmm. then your, your relationship will suffer later. But I think, I don't think anything of what you're saying is wrong. Mm-hmm. It may sound wrong because the first time you've said it or been asked that but if those are your boundaries and your standards and your partner knew that in going in from yes, the beginning in, yeah then there's no there shouldn't be a contractual jump, situation yeah. of why that'd be different now mm-hmm. it's a conversation later mm-hmm. on if he's like hey baby like you know i you know we know that you we weren't we talked about us being monogamous mm-hmm. you know prior to you doing your scenes and stuff but I really want to do this. Mm-hmm. Would you be open to it? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and then that's a conversation. And at that point, you'd be like, hey, no, yes, whatever. But yeah. again, it's, I don't think it's anything wrong with what you're saying. You just feel the way you do. So yeah. don't second guess what you're thinking. Yeah. I think that it's just being upfront uh, about what is really needed for you to have a, like, a lasting relationship. Yeah, because from the jump, I always said, like, you know, this is what I do for work and I will never dim my shine for another man because I already had done that previously. So then I sit here selfishly and say, well, if he came to me and wanted to start doing that, then I would go, no. But it's like, is that 
okay. But is that selfish? I don't think it's selfish if it was pre-talked about before. Right. I think that if it would be selfish if you both didn't ever talk about it, yeah. and then something came around and you were doing it, but you wouldn't allow him to do it, then mm -hmm. that's selfish. Mm -hmm. I think that it's mature to have, especially like, you know, nobody has a rule book on what sex workers relationships are supposed to be. I was married in one, you yeah. know, and so for me it was that I thought that would be the only way that I could have a, like a, a lasting relationship because this person ask, with your marriage were you guys open or were you we were not open so yeah. we work was work and mm -hmm. then at home was at home we okay. never went outside of our like marriage as far as the industry okay um so for me it was just like our thing was is that was in our relationship didn't um lack because of the industry it mm -hmm. was you know our communication was really big on our good about you know what we liked what we didn't want what our partners to do and that's mm -hmm. the vocal part mm -hmm. um so there was things that i maybe possibly would have done but my partner didn't want me to do so i gave respect on those things because it wasn't no you can't do it at all mm -hmm. um but i think that it's just telling about the communication of like what really works for you for me my thing was like if you have a great day don't rub it in my face have a yeah. great day if you have a bad day you know i'll talk to you for a minute but i don't want to talk to you all night long you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's one of those things like get it off your chest vent about it whatever but you know home is home and i don't bring your work home as well mm -hmm. because then it kind of seeps into other things mm -hmm. um but again i think the lines are it's like it's possible if as long as you communicate really well and you, and you whenever you're upset about something speak it you don't yeah. have to be crazy about it but you just you know express your feelings and if they take it and they respect you then you know then you can move on well and if not hit the road there's yeah. another one there's another dick out there that'll give you what you want i feel like sometimes we get so fixated of like we have to fix someone to be someone perfect like nobody's perfect it's like who's perfect for you yeah no 100 percent. who's perfect for you what are three top three rules that you live by you abide by do you have like kind of rules that you kind of like navigate your life by mm. Well, as far as like money goes, um, I go by, I live by this thing that Steve Harvey says where if you look at your savings or your checking account and you can't buy that big item twice and feel good about it, you shouldn't get it in the okay. first place. And so I try to live by that, try. Uh, sometimes I'm a spender, but um, for the most part, I'm a, I'm a pretty good saver. My mom has, you know, instilled that in me. Um, something else that I live by, um, I don't know, I guess I'm really realizing like what we were talking about, like, um, I don't know, this came to mind, but like beauty is the eye of, in the eye of the beholder. So like I'm realizing that everyone views beauty so differently. It's just, it's So what does beauty mean to you? How do you view it? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is like, uh, like a really, like a true beautiful person, like facially would be someone that's very symmetrical. Mm -hmm. like that type of look but then if i'm talking about like true beauty there are so many humans that i've met where like they may have a few flaws on their face but because they're such beautiful humans mm. i just see them as so so beautiful yeah so um so yeah beauty within. has changed for yeah. me as time has gone on okay. yeah so third rule do you have one i'm sure i do it might take me a second to think of one okay. um I don't know. I think another thing too is this is uh, something that I, I I think is important is like some girls that have been in the industry for a while sometimes aren't nice to other girls mm. that come in, and I feel like that's not an okay way to be. I understand that there's a lot of us, so sometimes you have to like conceal your energy, and you're not going to always be prep peppy with everybody. Mm. But I think it's important to recognize you have no idea where they will go in the industry, so mm. it's good to be nice to everybody have you had people be nice mean to you uh-huh yeah is there anybody particular yeah yeah there is Do you um call them out no and see why they <laughs> make them be nice to you and see, maybe <laughs> let them know you know a lot of it i think it goes both ways not in the sense yeah. not, i guess not both ways isn't the right thing i think that sometimes people don't know that mm -hmm. they're being standoffish or being whatever and then there's some people that do know and they don't care so i think it's like awareness i'll say this i think she might have been having an off day. Yeah. We all have off days. Um, but I think also being humble is mm. so important. And Agreed. I was really looking forward to working with this person. This person is in my agency. And I remember being excited and then just whoosh. Like I was just like. I get that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I just was like, what is going on? Not nice to the other girl. Not nice to mm. the crew. Not nice to anybody. That's another thing. I don't like girls that don't acknowledge people in the crew. Yeah. Like I, talking down to people. That yeah. Are like working, yeah yeah i'm not yeah. a fan of that um i think that yeah. just speaks about about being like 
a nice person or mm-hmm. a good person. You know what I mean? And everybody has different things. I think that, you know, I myself have seen people be very not humble. Mm-hmm. Like, my thing is, has always been about being humble. Um, my thing is, like, we put our pants on every single day just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you're no better than me and I'm no better than you. As long as you treat me with respect, I'll treat you with respect. Yeah. Um, I, myself, though, I feel like why I say that it's like kind of, an indifference in certain situations like myself I sometimes tend not to speak to everyone at first I read the room first and then I kind of go observer. in yeah and so mm-hmm. I feel like some people think like that I've been maybe not nice to them where it's like I don't think that that's maybe the word maybe mm-hmm. I'm not as always inviting but sometimes I feel like people also don't know what they go to or maybe they may be intimidated to talk to a group of people that they don't know mm-hmm. so I think that's again with the awareness but yeah. again if one's some things is set in stone and you're just not being mean or nice to anybody then they're just probably not a nice person and they're just shitty yeah but you know for me it's like i like to try to give people the benefit of the doubt where it's like you know what i mean uh, just because they may be having a shitty day i'm still going to be the person that i would be showing up regardless if mm-hmm. you had a happy day or not mm-hmm. then that's all we can do and just respect each other yeah and it's something i like i said it's like she she probably was just maybe having a bad day i have heard other things about yeah. this person so when you have a couple stories that line up you go oh, okay well maybe that's my advice would be the next time you see her, just go and act like it didn't happen and be nice and be who you are and just go up to them and just talk to them like totally. normal. You know what I mean? Because again, we're all people. Sometimes people feel like, oh, well, she didn't talk to me or I didn't do whatever. You know what I mean? Sometimes it becomes very catty like high school. Yeah. Or, you know, because so I've had school. girls like that yeah. sometimes sit on my couch too, but like, well, you never talked to me. I'm like, well, you didn't say anything to me either. So you sometimes you just don't know and it's miscommunication. Yeah. Yeah. And where it's like you could have a whole six months, a year of friendship that you just didn't know maybe she just was like I didn't even know I felt did that yeah. you know so I was I would say try again my biggest thing too this has just popped in my mind and this is something I say to a lot of uh, girls that I meet is like you know there are some stories where you hear where like there can be a few where you go okay now that I've heard a few of these now I can recognize them and then I can you know meet this person but always make your own first impression for like, sure people are always going to have shit to say about everyone so like you make you decide what you feel about that person agree you know? for sure describe something exciting in your life right now i know you're taking some time off mm-hmm. is that exciting to you because you get some downtime is there you have a project that you're working on when you're you're gonna come back that's yeah. exciting to you what's uh what do you have going um, on i'm just excited to get back to work again i'm so mm-hmm. bored like okay. i'm just like <laughs> i want to just start working again and i had to put a bunch of things on hold and i had something that i was going to shoot in july and now i had to push it to august and so now i'm going to shoot it in august and it's going to be epic and i'm very very excited for it awesome i'm yeah. excited for you thank you craziest fan interaction oh my god yeah, i don't even wanna know, know it. <laughs> we want to know yeah. it here private talk oh my gosh i've had so many crazy fan interactions i don't even give know. us your best one mm-hmm. we should like narrow it down like where where i was or something like i guess because uh, like where i meet fans i meet them at conventions okay so Hmm. Let's talk about your first crazy interaction. Because I'm sure the first has to like stick out, no? Yeah, I'm trying to think what would be my first. Well, it was AVN, so I went to AVN when I was brand new. I only had eight scenes. It was like 2020. Okay. Um, So I, uh, well, I guess I'll just talk about this fan. So, um, and I'm seeing him this weekend. He's my number one fan. His name is Ralph. Um, And so Ralph was like, my dude from day one and so he has like followed me to like each convention and um we're pretty good friends and it's got those air miles going yeah 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 he's um he's just one of those people that is kind of like a comic-con guy but for poor like okay. he's just very um he's got like twenty-two thousand of your eight by tens that you're gonna sign oh he has me framed in his house oh, yeah nice. yeah it's like that yeah so he's he, he loves me a lot um but he um has been around for a while so like he used to like watch ginger lynn mm-hmm. and like that time period so he always says that i like remind him of ginger lynn um but a little yeah but and so like um I got to be with Ginger and him at Exotica and like take a p- photo with him mm. and he was just like losing it, you know. <laughs> he jerked off to that picture for sure. Yes. Afterwards. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. So, uh Ralph, I met him and then, you know, I guess I just have always seen him and I guess I just have a little bit of a crew. Like I have uh like at least like five or six dudes that are like my really good fans that I just like 
keep around that are like really awesome and there are a few fans of like a bunch of other girls so what too. makes it crazy that's what i'm trying to think of i'm like i haven't really had anything that's like crazy that a fan has so you're done. just talking about like a crazed fan but like what's yeah. a crazy situation like did someone give you a weird gift maybe ask you something weird did you have somebody waiting for you at your room did you have somebody well yeah like, if we want to talk about like offensive stuff i got a lot of stuff yeah, yeah like yeah. crazy okay. like that yeah we can go crazy in that way i was thinking crazy in like a positive way i'm like i don't really have anything no, that's positive this yeah. is here we're going to teach our fans how to be better <laughs> there, yeah <laughs> Well, here we go. Um, so this is something that was very, very unfortunate. I had a fan recently at um, DC and he, you know, did the whole, oh, I don't have any money. And I'm like, oh, well, you need to get some money here. There's a lot of lovely ladies that, you know, are needing money. So there's an ATM right over there. This is the worst place to be with no money. Sorry, yeah. you need to go home immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Pack your bags and go. Literally. And he had the nerve to pressed me a little bit longer and I had a little bit of a line and I, I just said fuck it fine let's just take a selfie really quick for free sure so you're allowed no, one freebie a day just to let you know yeah. to not feel bad about it you okay. know that's my rule I'm okay. always like you know you gotta choose wisely because sometimes it's when you're walking in a crowd yeah. sometimes walking it'll be whatever you, do freeze. you know what yeah. I mean but, yeah. no, but only one because if you stop for everybody then one, know, one a day true. one yeah. a day yeah. just food for thought women I do free I, Depends. I Depends. don't have a lot of women that yeah. come. If I start to have a lot of women, I, I'd probably change yeah. that. But I, since it's a rarity, I'm like, yeah. oh. I like it. Um, so he decided to take the selfie with me. And then when he did, took the selfie with me, he snuck a kiss on my mouth while we were oh, taking the no. selfie. Oh, yeah. No. I was pissed. Oh, no. What did you I, do? I just said, what the fuck? And he grabbed his phone and he bolted for the door. <sighs> and I couldn't grab a security guard, you know, like I did, you know, I grabbed him, but he was gone. Yeah, they yeah. Go, oh, what does he look like? I'm like, like every other white dude here. I'm like, I couldn't tell you, you know. Yeah, that's, see, that's why you shouldn't yeah. have let, that goes with ex experience because you yeah. weren't, you didn't expect anything like that to no. happen. But it's also, it's like, you know, your intuition told you to be like, look, dude, I have a whole line of paying customers. Maybe tomorrow, come back another day, but today's not the day. Maybe yeah. when my line's low, like a little bit, whatever, you just have to like, you know, again, it's experience where it's like, you don't know and you don't want to like make your fans upset, mm -hmm. but it's the same thing when someone's panhandling or whatever. You don't know their true story. They can yeah. be telling you whatever it is. You just don't know. You can't feel sorry for everybody. Yeah. Because if that's the case, I have a sob story too. Do you want to, you know what I mean? So it's like, unfortunate. No, and that's, you get a lot of lingerers. And also you get a lot not of, yeah. having people that are like in that space to you. Where yeah. it's like, I always, even because with my big booty, you know what I mean? I make sure that my yeah. hand is on one part of their hand I'm mm -hmm. like you could touch don't grab mm -hmm. but if you grab my ass then we're, we're not gonna get your picture mm -hmm. because you know you have to have limits to it yeah and there'll be people that have done it and I've not taken the picture because I'm like I told you yeah, what it was it. and that's just what it is but it's boundaries the thing is like we do porn you were watching me get fucked I'm doing all these things for your entertainment I'm not a piece of meat so mm -hmm. respect me because I am a woman and mm -hmm. you wouldn't want anybody to do that to your mother your daughter or your sister so respect me or we're gonna have issues I had a situation at Jersey uh, like a year ago so um, this guy was awful. I don't. I was drinking, so I don't com completely remember what happened. But me and my girlfriend just went in on him, and we're screaming at him, and then he's screaming at us, and then we're kind of making a scene, which just looks so bad, you know. And then I realize that that's what's happening, and I'm like, okay, let's just like. So then I go Walk and get away. Dan, yeah. and I'm like, okay, this guy needs to go, and like. It was just frustrating because this person had paid to be in there to be a dick. Mm. This is another thing I had happen. Now we're now we're off and running. See so, now now yeah. it got turned. Not the wheels are turning. <laughs> this guy. Uh also, yeah, guys that pay to be in there to be rude, like to, in, be, to be where? What are you talking to about? To be at like conventions, uh, like to be like in spaces where we're at, like to be like at feature dancing events or anything like that, where they pay to be there and then they choose to be rude. It's like I think that they get off on maybe being rude. That's kind of like their mo. But this one, uh, these two dudes, they were like, oh well, you know, who are you? You know, kind of trying to like downsize me, <laughs> and I'm like. Oh, well, my, my name's Lily Bell. Oh, well, we've never heard of Don't you. Don't you have a sign? Aren't you standing? This is what you're standing by your thing? So I was walking through the crowd, and at mm, that point, uh, I was at a, this one, they had me on the badge. Mm. Uh, and so I grabbed someone that had me on the badge, and I go, see, that's me right there. I got to go. And I was like, you guys are trying to, like, make me feel small. It was not cool. But I also have to say, you're not wrong, but it's also 
when you're triggered by something, it's your own trigger. It's your own like insecurity of certain thing is they that's their problem. They don't know who you are just yeah. because they're saying like that. But a, they said it but like a, you, you don't, don't know have, who you are like that. Then, and you should yeah. say that's your problem. Yeah. Maybe if you maybe you should. And that's all, you know what I mean? Like, because if they want a rise out of you, and that's the whole part of these, like when you that's say these mean wanted, people, yeah. where it's like, and at the end of the day, you don't got to talk to anybody. You no. don't know me, then you know what I do. So when people want to say something mean, I just keep walking. You don't owe them anything, you don't <laughs> owe anything, whatever, where it's like one of those things where I'm sure it doesn't happen all the time. And it does suck because people should have, you know, obviously if you're in those situations, in those spaces, you would think that people are all there to be nice or yeah. be whatever. But A, men don't know how to speak to women, mm -mm. especially someone that they jerk off to. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's like, they're gonna look for the meanest thing because that's typically how women respond because mm -hmm. they wanna talk, they're like, I'm not, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because it's the first reaction where it's like, you know what, well then that's your loss. No, I looked at them and I go, this is, I'm like, you're not even paying for my, this is something too, it's like. But look, it's taking your energy in a negative way away from the positive because of the reaction it's getting. Is yeah, what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, because for me, I get like, you're not at my booth. You're perceiving me and taking me out of my time and also belittling me. And there's no reason for me to even be having this conversation in the first place. You guys are the ones that stopped me. Here's the badge that I'm on. I'm out. Yeah. And then I moved on. And then I have like all my fans that are cool, that are there, that are ha like supportive. And they're like, what happened? And I'm like, oh, you know, meh, you know, and it's okay. And then I get over it. But it's just like, that was one time that that happened. And I just remember it stuck with me because it's just like, it is that doesn't really happen yeah. especially there like yeah. it really doesn't but it's one of those things again it's experience to learn for like the examples of like when those bad situations Just keep be your in, cool but they'll be in certain places where that's not a convention base that there will be people saying mean things or we whatever where it's just like at the end of the day they may get you on the wrong day and you may say go fuck yourself i've been that person too or i'll hit you in the you know what i mean yeah is it lady like in my situation and what things that i've said no but it's like learning how to not let them take your energy so to be I, positive in a sense of where it's like you know never breaking out of like the character of who you really are and if who you are is to, to say something back every time then you say something back every time yeah you know but for me i think it's like the in those spaces that like, you want to keep your pot your energy, your energy you want to yeah. be you know you, you be like oh, you know what well then there's a lot of other girls here that you can be fans with i don't have time for it sorry sir Facts. gotta go literally yeah i was like here's the badge i'm out and then um Something that just happened to me recently where you're talking about like conserving your energy and things like that, uh, you know, and I'm sure this has happened to you as your name got bigger and people started to say things about you. Um, I was pretty open about things that have happened to me medically, like w on Holly Randall's podcast. And this woman watched what happened on Holly Randall's podcast and made a video about me on YouTube and mm. like picked me apart. Like this 15 minute video where she just like, you know, just made me look like the cheapest whore and like all this stuff and how like gross my job was and it really like hit me but at the same time like that's her opinion and i was doing the right thing my intention was to warn other girls that this is not do a walk in the park do you feel gross no do you feel bad about what you do no then why do you care about what this lady thinks about you again yeah easier said than done i've definitely me, been where people where it's like they're gonna shame you they're whatever because they don't understand why you chose to do what you're doing totally. and be vocal of why you're telling things for me this was the first time i've ever seen someone pick apart a video of me where i've ever been vulnerable i've never ever I've talked about that openly this is the first time i've ever talked about it openly and someone watched that and took it in a way that i didn't mean it yeah you know i and so that was hurtful it was also hurtful because it was another woman and then it was also hurtful because like i was naive to think that when i was talking about that on holly's podcast that there were people that weren't going to be sex positive to watch it but at the same time i was talking about it with my friend charlotte and she said lily you know, this is something like, I'm not saying that you, like you deserve this or anything like this, but this is something we signed up for. People are gonna say shit about us and you have to just take it. And this is your first taste of someone really picking you apart. And this is your only first taste of the negativity from that podcast. Just take it with a grain of salt and yeah. move on. Well, we got the video removed. It was copyrighted anyway. And so yeah. it's fine, but it's a, just a sign to me that like, I guess four years in, I'm really realizing like, this like this job that I'm doing is kind of not forever, but it's really like I'm in it and there's no going back from it and people are gonna say shit and it doesn't fucking matter. At the like, end of the day, matter. like I feel like how we talked about earlier on levels of like how you said you've been in this for four years where it's like, you know, kind of like sophomore, freshman, junior, like the levels of whatever. 
for me personally, I feel like the, around the fifth year mark, like I was already, like first you're popular within the industry, then you're popular within the masses, and then it goes, you know, it spreads from there. But by like the fourth and fifth year, like everyone knew who I was, mm -hmm. of everything I've done or whatever, and that's kind of like when things started happening. But again, it's like, it's only you are gonna be able to control your emotions. Only yeah. your hate will come to you, how hate, whatever, what, what bothers you, what bothers me is very different, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And again, it, it you take it with a grain of salt the first time and you see how that you access, you know, move differently. Me, I never looked at any bad, like forum, I never looked at comments, there's threat, like adult DVD really? talk, there's there's threads about me. You never read comments all, about yourself? No, none of that, any of that stuff. No the threads, none of the free ones back in the days because if I did and I had girlfriends that would do whatever, you I'd would be just upset, start, yeah. I'd spiral, sure whatever. Spiral. But at the end of the day, if I can sleep at night every day from the choices that I made and I chose to do on set and any with my business and whatever, that's all then that that's matters. all that matters. Yeah. I have a family that loves me, I know who I am, I don't need to prove myself to any anybody else because that makes them feel better so keep that in mind where it's like you're not going to be whatever if you chose to be on that podcast and talk about it for educationally to make other women to give them a side or whatever then you keep that whatever else's opinion is not yours and it yeah. doesn't matter and you're never going to prove everybody different you're not going to please everybody and you know what i mean that's why it's like as long as you can stay true to who you are and mm -hmm. how you want to perform how you want to show yourself to the world whatever you want to do and show up in life that's on you yeah. nobody else can take that away from you so other than that, 100%. try to not be so triggered. Yeah. And then when you are triggered, realizing why you are triggered. Because mm -hmm. there are things in there because you are new to the business. And yeah. there are some things that people put shame on you, which that shame is not yours. It's theirs. Yeah. So well, it's she's like saying finding. shitty things that, you know, and this well, is what course, Charlotte's saying. She's good. like, you know, you know, I think we, this is something we all think about as sex workers, you know, that people always put on us where they're like, well, this eventually is going to end. So what are you going to do when you're all washed up? Well, you know, and she's saying all those, those types of things. And it's like you know uh, her, her shit just like she's a hateful person and she has a lot of hate in her heart and that's why she's making videos like that and when you look through her whole page her content is all just hateful and my dad he said the sweetest thing he was like you know Lil like you are someone that leads with love you're someone that leads with empathy and that's why you said those things in that podcast and like this is one of the sweetest things that someone's ever said to me. He just said this to me yesterday because he said, I'm not going to watch that video. I refuse to watch that video. That woman doesn't know you. That woman doesn't know your character. And it's not something I'm even going to give any time. If there were things happening that were going wrong, like catastrophic things in the world and people, you know, lives were being lost, you would sacrifice your own life to help others. And that's the type of person that you are. And I know that about you. And that's the type of things that matter. Not what this woman is saying. I love that. And I was like, it made me start crying. I was like, that's one of the nicest things anyone's ever said to me. I was Thanks, like, that's Dad. true. That is, that is how I feel. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the good. shit that and again, matters. You stay, you stay with that. You know yeah. what I mean? You stay with that. Fuck that lady. Fuck her. her. Fuck her. <laughs> All right, we're going to play my favorite part now of the whole episode, which I've been having a lovely time getting to know you, but Truth of Texas is one of my favorite games, so we're going to get to know you a little bit more intimately. Cool. All right, Miss Lily Bell. All right, we're going to start with the naughty questions. Right. Do you like dirty talk? Yes. Can you give us an example of your dirty talk? Yeah, I'm a big dirty talker. I'm a big, like, daddy talker, so I love the daddy okay, talking. Okay, so if we were going to get a custom video from you, what's a little snippet of a dirty talking segment with Miss Lily Bell? Hmm. Mm, daddy, I just want to throat your whole fucking cock. Just get it all the way down my throat. That way all my spit is just getting all the way down, dripping down to your balls. And that way when you're all fucking wet, I can just slide you into my pussy without any hands because I'm so wet in my pussy Ooh. and on your cock. She naughty. Yeah, daddy. Daddy, you better be ready. <laughs> all right, lube or spit? Um, well, I like lube preferably because I feel like uh, you can't go wrong with lube. Lube is, is best. Lube or spit? <laughs> don't be technical with me, girl. This is <laughs> lube. This isn't a kink lube. set. We don't even be technical. I like lube. <laughs> Choked or spanked? Uh, spanked. Have you ever faked an orgasm? Yeah. Can we hear what that sounds like? <laughs> sure. Fuck. Oh my god, I'm gonna come. Oh. Fuck, I'm coming. Oh. Those acting things have been paying off. I even saw the eye roll. She was really into character, guys. She's a real one over there. 
<laughs> and I could have made it longer, but I made it just She's shorter. She's even sweating. No, that's just I'm not on air condition here at the studio. No, it's I'm like literally dripping <laughs> sweat. <laughs> like my boobs are like soaked under here. I'm right there with you. I wish it was because I was sitting on your face, but it's not that cool. But you know, we're gonna we're almost done. We're almost done with you. Um, role play. What's your favorite type of character to play when you're role playing? Hmm. You know, I'm really diving into my dom era right now. So, like, I'm really into, like, doming women, doming men. Dommy I, mommy. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Okay. And it's just, it's starting to just, like, really get revved up inside me. I did a scene with, like, Phoenix Marie, and she just fucking rocked my world. And whenever I try to dom, I just try to emulate what she did she's a good dom to to practice with yeah. that to her uh she's she's definitely a dommy mommy she just owns it there's just no and, and i think dom comes with like quick wit and like yeah that's something i'm still learning it's more i mean it's about owning who you're like your like your sexuality in a dominant like you know alpha way you yeah know? there's just no other way it's just you're an alpha yeah um oral sex sloppy or clean sloppy have you ever had a threesome prior to the industry no biggest turn off what is something that someone can do immediately and you're just like pussy's dry um i don't like someone that is hateful towards women in any way i hate that okay yeah any misogynistic shit okay romantic questions would you consider yourself a romantic yes i would say so um but uh, it takes time okay. uh, yeah i have to really trust you <clears throat> what's yeah. the most romantic thing you've done for a partner mm. that's a great question um or are you the one who just gets the romantic things done to you i i'm a princess for sure i definitely get things done f to me okay. but i feel like i am a giver i i'm a really good gift giver so okay. like something that i do romantically i feel is like You'll, my partner will say things throughout you know the year that we're together and so I'll take note of that and then when it's time to buy gifts your thoughtful gift okay. yeah there's something that he had already had mentioned that okay. uh, yeah that he'd have no clue that you're going to go and get yeah what about what's the most romantic thing done for you since you say you're the princess <laughs> um I get taken on trips I think that that's pretty romantic okay. I like that I think that that's nice um vacations yeah i would say that that's probably okay. probably the nicest thing so we know your biggest turn off what is your biggest turn on um my biggest turn on is definitely confidence not okay. cockiness i like I like a man who's confident uh, or a woman who's confident i like someone that just knows what they want and and takes it so could you be in a relationship with a woman mm -hmm. okay have sure. you in the past no okay. um but you're open to it i'm open to it i was i went on a date with a girl a couple times before i started dating the person I'm with now and you know I always wanted to venture more into that but I have always just been with guys okay you know and but um yeah well, I don't if know. it's meant to happen it'll happen yeah <laughs> foreplay or sex you have to pick one foreplay what are deal breakers for you in a relationship <sighs> cheating lying cheating cheating is cheating? huge yeah okay naked or lingerie lingerie I love lingerie Mm, let's see bathroom sex or car sex bathroom sex giving or receiving are you a giver or are you a receiver miss princess uh, over there miss princess peach over here i would just, uh, i'd say i'm a giver giver yeah i'm a giver naturally, favorite yeah. place to be kissed I, I love the kissing, the teasing, like right, right in the inner thigh, like okay. or like that right area right before your right. pussy's about yeah. to get in. You're like, oh, just do it already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Diamond. Spicy questions. Okay. Something that is completely off limits sexually for you that you don't even want to try. That you just maybe you've tried it and you just don't like it. Um, I'm not really into like pee or vomit. Okay. That's like probably my vomit. People yeah. ask you to vomit on. I've them? done a vomit scene, like oh. hook a pot shot. They make you vomit on yourself, oh, and I didn't particularly want to do that not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, how do you make yourself vomit? He was searching for my did uvula. You tell, did they tell you before you were gonna be vomiting? You know, no. It was kind of one of those tricky things. No, they didn't. Yeah. I would not be okay with that. It was, it wasn't okay. Like, I don't think yeah. I would be able to vomit, first of all. I mean, like, you got me fucked up. Yeah, like, hookup shots, hookup hot shot is not, 
Not the best company, yeah. And I mean, some mm. girls love it. I, I do like it sometimes, but like... This is what OC put, booked you for? I wanted the booking. Oh. I was the one who searched for it because I Girl. knew what I was getting into, but I didn't know that I was getting into vomit. So in a way, it was kind of like I didn't ever... It was kind of my fault in a way, I felt, because it was like I was the one that searched for that booking and I got that booking, mm -hmm. but I didn't agree to vomit. And then the vomit thing happened. And then afterwards, you know, we're filming the video and they're like, so were you okay with everything? And I said, well, no, I mean, I didn't really like the vomit. And they're like, well, you can't say that. I can't say that. So, you know, I had, mm. it was fine. <laughs> And then they didn't have any um, shampoo. I didn't bring any shampoo, and I, I know this is so <laughs> stupid. They had shampoo that had sulfates I in it. Fix my face. I'm and like, I'm like, I didn't want to put sulfate in my hair, so I went home with vomit in my hair instead of putting sulfates in my hair. Because I was like, I'm not gonna put a shampoo in my hair that's not blonding shampoo. This sounds horrible <laughs> and bougie at the same time. <laughs> I was like, I'm not. And also, I never get breakfast before going to a shoot, and I got that like Wolfgang whatever at the Burbank airport. You know, I that, don't know what Wolfgang yeah, whatever. It's is. that Wolfgang <laughs> puck that yeah yeah. It's, it's some stupid restaurant they have in there. So I got a nice breakfast that I ate, and then I proceeded to vomit all over myself. Oh. So I was like, that's nice. Don't want to ever do that again. So yeah, that was a hard no for me. I can't. I don't even know what to say about that one. Yeah. I just don't one like and done. vomit in general. No. Like. There's times it happens. There's a lot of questions I have here, private talk. First of all, <laughs> if any of my fans out there are watching that, I'm concerned. I mean, I don't, there's a helpline. I, <laughs> I don't know. No, but I mean, I guess more power to you. I just don't understand how you could legally sell that. Like, how is that? I don't know. That's just a little. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess because some girls want to vomit. Some girls want to get peed on. Some girls want, you know, all of that. I get the wanting to, yeah. but I think there's also like, isn't there some kind of legality about I think it's just blood and, and poop you can't do. Okay, okay. Yeah. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe yeah. I'm just, I'm just like, any, any, like, any of those things I'm not sure about. I just don't know how I would be, like, I don't think I could do that. But you said they were like searching, they are like. He was, he was fucking my throat, but like, you know, when he, he, he's taking the dick and almost searching for it like a flashlight, like he was dragging mm. it in the back of my throat mm. to where my uvula was. So then eventually I just, yeah. Gagged everywhere. Yeah. Was it a lot? It was, yeah, I had a good amount of breakfast that morning, so I, I would, did, yeah, it was not ideal. All right, back not to ideal. spicy questions. <laughs> uh, let's see, have you, who's your celebrity hall pass? Mm -hmm. Probably James Franco's brother, Dave Franco. I really am attracted to him. I don't know why, there's okay. something about him. I just okay. like think okay. he's the hottest thing ever. Have you ever stayed in a relationship for sex? No. No. no, if the sex was good, you didn't stay a little longer than you know you wanted to. No, no. I mean, I did. I got slutted the fuck out when I was in the industry. So prior to getting in the industry, uh, I didn't really have like I had good sex, but not like what I had now. Okay. okay. Yeah. Have you ever had anybody fall asleep during sex? No. 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 Most embarrassing thing that's happened to you sexually it could be on set it could be off set oh sure uh there's this new guy named hollywood cash and he has a very very large cock and i was throating mm. it and so you know i i got how big is very large um. can you show us with your hands Okay, okay. I'd say okay. he's like 10 and a half inches. 10 and a half, yeah. all right. He's a big boy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's big. Um, and he uh, throated me, and I got it all the way down. And when I unhinged my jaw and got it all the way down, Unhinged I your jaw? Yeah. Okay. Because, <laughs> you, you know, you, you can slide a cock back. I mean, it will hit that part, but then there's some dicks where they're skinny enough where it can go all the way through your throat, like down to your throat mm. there's only some dicks that okay. can do that though all like right. uh but when so he got it all the way down my throat and then i remember the force of it made me fart was and, it loud yeah and i Did said please smell? cut that out no mm. no because if they're loud they don't <laughs> smell i feel like how do you know who's who is doing the research for this if they're loud they don't smell so most of the time i feel because that's like the silent but deadly maybe I, mean, yeah. I don't know i mean i don't know who's the research team on that one but <laughs> yeah. i that's accurate information here, but that's an like, embarrassing one. Yeah, and I said, I said, please cut that out. And did they? No. Did you like act like it didn't happen afterwards, and you just kept it going? It was pretty odd. Uh, no, I, I cut There's it. There's no I turning said, back. Yeah, I said, I said, please, please, please cut that out. Okay, okay. Called someone the wrong name during sex. No, never. What's no. The, what's the sex skill that you were most proud of? If there's one thing that you're like known for, claim to fame, Miss Lily Bell, she's known for? 
I would definitely probably just say my head, probably just give right, a sloppy head. head and the good deep head. throating, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm, let's see. Most number of times you've had sex in one day. Mm. Oh, like maybe like uh, with different people or with like one person? We'll say one person. <laughs> okay. And then different people. Mm. Different people. Uh, like eight, nine, da, na, na, nine, na, 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 na. nine. I'd say nine. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, How many I, people? I, I have an orgy that day and then have sex with my boyfriend after. Oh, so. okay. So he has no like rule afterwards. Like you're just ready to go right after. Does no. it turn him on more when you get fucked? No, by? No? no, doesn't no. matter. Just no, it doesn't matter. Him. Yeah, okay. yeah. L and luckily he's not like that where he's like, oh, you can't touch me when you come home. Okay, I, that would be a deal. That would be a deal breaker for me. I would agree yeah. with that. Yeah. All right, so that's with. Multiples with, with just one person. Five. Five? Yeah. Okay. All right, Miss Lily Bell, that is the rest of Truth with Texas. Cool. That was a little speedy version of yeah. it. Is there anything that you would like to ask Miss Texas before you get off the couch? Yeah, I guess I'm curious. Who were you married to? I don't know who you were married oh, to. Well, you know, his name doesn't get clout on my show, but oh, I will okay. tell you after. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't after. know you were married, yeah. I was married once upon a time, many, okay. many moons ago. Um, yeah, you know. That's I do have one happened. more question for you, yeah. too. Are you planning to ever come back to do pro scenes? Is that something you want to do again? Um, you know, I never say never. I feel like the way that I kind of exited the industry, you know, is kind of not exactly how I wanted to. I don't know if that means that it was meant to be that way or not. Um, but, you know, you never say never. I never what was your you know? exit year? What year was it? Oh, girl, I don't even know. Um, because I, so with, I, I really don't even know the exact year. I don't yeah. live my life how I smoke way too much weed for all of that. Yeah. But I was contracted with Adam and Eve, and okay. then I was my, or I was contracted with Adam, Adam and Eve, and then right after that I went with Elegant Angel, mm -hmm. and then um, I directed for them. Mm -hmm. So I finished my contract, and then I also directed at the same time, so it was kind of... Yeah. Um... Yeah, so it's been like five years since I've shot anything. Okay. Other than for myself, for my OnlyFans, I do solos and stuff like that on mm -hmm. my stuff. But I've been thinking about maybe doing some collabs here and there, just not exactly sure what that looks like because the industry's kind of really changed since I've left. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just kind of seeing like what that looks like for me. But again, I love the industry. I'm very fortunate for the fans that I've had and the name that I've you know got to acquire and the platform that it's given me to have my private talk and to do all other things. So like I said, I never bit the hand that fed me. So who knows? You mm -hmm. might see Miss Texas very soon. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So let I us know where we can that. follow you, where we can support you, everything that you have going on, Miss Lily Bell. Okay, so my OnlyFans is uh, Lily underscore Bell XXX. Okay. Um, my Twitter is Your Fave Lil, and my Instagram is Bell of the underscore Ball. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lily Bell. I had a great time getting to know you a little bit better. I hope that you've gotten some maybe inspiration and some um, advice from Miss Texas. Yeah. And until uh, we meet again, private talk. This episode is sponsored by Bet Online.